What's up guys, welcome back. There's no better time to give in to that sweet tooth than the holiday season and Christmas is right around the corner. So today I'm gonna show you how to make these delicious cinnamon rolls. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right guys, meet me in the kitchen. Let's make it happen. First things first, we're getting started with our dough ingredients. We need some instant dry yeast, some sugar, a couple of eggs, one cup of warm milk, four cups of all purpose flour, and a half cup of softened butter. As always guys, the specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below, so don't forget to check that out. So first things first, we're gonna dump some flour into a large mixing bowl. That way I can use a spoon to scoop the flour out of the mixing bowl and into our measuring cup. This step is super important guys, because as you know, baking is a science. You wanna make sure that all of your measurements are 100% accurate. So just repeat that same process for a full four cups and then I like to also measure out a half cup of flour and set that aside just in case we need it to thicken things up a little bit. And use the back of a butter knife like you see right there just to scrape the top off. That way we know that our measurements are totally accurate. We're gonna set that aside until we need it for later. And now we're moving on to our milk. You wanna add your milk to a measuring cup like you see right here and place that into the microwave for a few seconds until the milk hits 110 to 115 degrees. That's the temperature needed to activate the yeast. So once we get the temperature we're looking for, we're gonna add that to our KitchenAid. You could also add this to a mixing bowl and just use a hand blender. So into that milk, we're gonna add in the active dry yeast. Again, all the specific measurements and ingredients are in the description box, so don't forget to check that out. And then you just wanna allow that yeast to sit in the warm milk for a couple of minutes until it starts to foam up a little bit. So after a couple of minutes have passed, we're going in with our eggs one at a time, like you see me doing right here. Then we're going in with the melted butter also. Of course, we gotta add in that sugar to keep it nice and sweet. Once we've added those ingredients, we're gonna set our KitchenAid to a medium low speed and allow that to mix to combine for a couple of minutes. You can increase the speed gradually, but you don't need it to be too high. And again, if you don't have a KitchenAid, no big deal. You can do this with a hand blender as well. Now I'm going in with a pinch or two of salt just to wake everything up, let all those flavors kind of activate. And next, my friends, as you know, we're making a dough here. So we're gonna add in our all-purpose flour. You wanna add that a little bit at a time and then we're just gonna let the beater blade do its job. You can mix that on medium speed for a few minutes and then you just wanna let that sit for five minutes to allow that flour to soak up all the liquids. And then you wanna scrape the dough off the beater blade and attach the dough hook. And once you attach the dough hook, you wanna knead the dough for about five to seven minutes or until the dough is elastic and smooth looking, which you'll see here in just a second. The dough should be sticky and tacky and stick to the sides of the bowl. You don't want it to be too sticky though, so if it is a little too sticky, that's what that other half of a cup of flour is for. You can add that a little bit at a time if it becomes too sticky. So as you can see here, I went ahead and added about two tablespoons out of that half cup of flour from earlier. So that's what I ended up using for this particular recipe. And this consistency is absolutely perfect for our dough. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and scrape the dough off of the dough hook. We're gonna get some cooking spray and spray a mixing bowl and then add that dough to that mixing bowl and cover it. But before we cover it, we're gonna go ahead and get in there with our hands and form it into a ball. Once we do that, we're gonna cover it with a towel and let that sit for about 30 minutes to give the dough some time to rise. And that gives us just enough time to make our filling, which to me is the fun part. That's where all the flavor and deliciousness is coming from. So what we're gonna do is into a mixing bowl, we're gonna add a half cup of softened butter. And then we're also gonna add one cup of packed brown sugar. So get in there with your hands, make sure it's packed in there real good, as you see right there. We're gonna add that to the mixing bowl as well. This recipe is absolutely delicious, guys. Perfect for the holidays. It's super hard to walk by a Cinnabon when you're hungry and not get some, so you can make it at home now. We're going in with two tablespoons of cinnamon and some vanilla extract, along with some butter extract as well. Oh man, tons of flavor. Gotta have a pinch of salt in there just to wake everything up. Get in there with your rubber spatula or whisk and mix everything to combine. That's why it's important to use the softened butter. That makes this a lot easier for you. And this is what you should be looking like afterwards. So you can get in there and taste it if you want to, adjust the flavor to your preference if you want it a little bit sweeter. There we go. That is pretty damn good. And now we're gonna go ahead and make our frosting. And for that frosting, we're gonna grab a medium sized mixing bowl. To that mixing bowl, we're gonna add eight ounces of softened cream cheese and one third cup of softened butter. You wanna break out the hand blender here and mix until that is nice and smooth. 
Probably takes about two to three minutes depending on how much power you got in that hand blender. Once it gets nice and smooth, we're gonna add two and a half cups of powdered sugar. You can taste as you go and adjust the flavor to your preference. If you want it a little sweeter, you can add a little additional powdered sugar. I like to add the powdered sugar a little bit at a time and continue to mix as I add it. Overall, you wanna beat this for about five to six minutes. The longer you mix it, the more white the frosting becomes. So just keep that in mind, depending on what color you're going for. This is absolutely delicious. This is also when you can get creative and add additional flavors. You could add a little rum or bourbon, a little maple extract like I'm adding right there, or just a little vanilla extract. Whatever flavor you wanna make this frosting is totally customizable. So just keep that in mind as you're making this. That is the consistency and the color I like for my frosting for cinnamon rolls. Oh man, say it with me guys, looking good. Can't wait to dig into that. Make sure you don't eat all of the frosting before you get it on your cinnamon rolls. Speaking of cinnamon rolls, it's time to roll out our dough. So we're gonna flour our workstation. I'm using just a granite countertop here, but you could also do this on a large cutting board. Make sure your hands and your work surface and your utensils are well floured. Today, we're gonna use a rolling pin to roll this out to make sure that has some adequate flour on it as well. There we go. I'm gonna throw the dough down and roll it out evenly. We're trying to go for a rectangle shape here. That's the best way to do it. So you can cut this out and roll them out nice and even. So just roll it out in all directions to see I have a nice even rectangle or at least the best you can. As you can see here, my rectangle is not very uh, rectangular, but hey, I'm trying my best. So once you pass your geometry test, we're gonna go ahead and add our filling. You wanna smooth this out nice and even, smoother than a three day weekend. Oh man, just look at how sweet and delicious that looks. This is gonna make absolutely amazing cinnamon rolls for Christmas. Go ahead and take a pizza cutter or a knife, paring knife, something like that, and cut out the excess dough. You're not gonna need that. You can save that for some sort of pastry or turnover or something if you wanna save that. Otherwise, just throw it in the trash because today we are making cinnamon rolls. So use your hands and kind of get up under there. You wanna do this quickly. Luckily for you guys, you won't be filming this and having to shoot every single shot. So this will work, move a little bit faster for you guys. The longer it sits, the more likely it is to stick to your granite countertop but you guys shouldn't have that problem. And at the end of the day, we got it done. It's looking good. We're gonna take us a cutter and cut these into about two inch thick pieces. If you really care about Santa Claus this year, you should skip the cookies or the chips ahoy and give him some cinnamon rolls. These are gonna be so good. Your house is gonna be smelling amazing. You're not gonna have to go to Cinnabon this year. Cut them into even shapes and then we're gonna place them in a casserole dish or a foil pan. You can even put them in a cast iron skillet if you want to. Give them some adequate space though because they're still going to rise a little bit. This was enough for eight large cinnamon rolls, but if you want to make them a little bit smaller, you could probably get 10 to 12 out of this recipe. You want to cover them with a towel for about 20 minutes or until they double in size like you see here. And then we're going to pour some heavy cream right over top. This is a trick that I learned online when researching Cinnabon's recipe. This keeps them nice and fluffy and soft in the middle. Definitely don't skip this step. Then they're going into that 375 degree oven for about 20 minutes or until they're brown and beautiful like you see right here. Now you do want to let these cool for about five minutes before you go frosting them. After five minutes, we're going to start adding on that frost and make sure you pile it on there nice and heavy because why the hell not? We're here for a good time, not a long time, and it's the holidays. So that's the perfect excuse for overindulgence. Oh my goodness, that looks good. I can't wait to plate these up and get ourselves a taste test. Brace yourself for a trademark money shot. When I bust this cinnamon roll open, all hell is gonna break loose, so prepare yourselves. Look at how moist and delicious, nice and soft this cinnamon roll looks. Oh my goodness. Going in for a taste test, your boy's on a diet, but as you can see, that's a rather large bite, Matt. This recipe is fantastic, guys. Give it a try. Make sure you give your boy a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and the bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.